Oh, you can open. Cool. Uh, Hi guys, thanks for joining us today. This is uh, Eric and I'm Morgan and uh, we're here with Comic Town and we're going to open up this uh, box of Ixalan today. Absolutely, before we actually get started with that, I want to talk about some of our events that we have coming up. First of all, as always, with a new set release of, of, of any Magic product, ex except for Master Series, of course, we do uh, F and M in a box for both oh, of our draft box. and our standard events, which means basically top eight to both of those events. We'll be paying out three boxes. For first place takes home a clean crisp 36 packs of Ixalan. That's awesome. And what then, else we got um, going on? Well, com coming up this Saturday, we have our Legacy Comic Town Classic Series event coming up. And it starts at noon, it's on Saturday. And uh, $1,000 in cash is gonna be spread through the top eight. And uh, there's also a 4X multiplier on your Planeswalker points. And uh, winners to that event will also get invites into the invite only Comic Town Classic Series happening at the end of this year. Super exclusive. That's not all. We actually have a real special event that Star City Games has been so kind enough to uh, let us run. Um, as most of you know, we run a lot of different invitational qualifiers for Star City Games. Coming up on Saturday, October the 7th, we're going to have a double price support invitational qualifier in the modern format. That again, event will also start at noon. So basically what I mean by double price support, it's basically it's going to be a $2,000 price purse. Wow. Paying down to the top 16 players. Wow. Instead of normally with an IQ, it's only a thousand and top two get an invite. Top four players of this event are going to get invites to an invitational. That's awesome. Which is, which is awesome. Like, honestly, Star City Games has been great to us over the years, and this is just another notch in the belt of of awesome events they get to let us run. But enough talking about events and, and rambling on here. Uh, Let's get to what people are waiting for. Right. <laughs> I mean, four thousand of you guys chimed in and seen our our last box opening. So I mean, we have no invocations or masterpieces to worry about opening in this. So we don't have to. <laughs> you know, go over again, but let's uh, let's see what happens. I mean, we got some cool dinosaurs, some really cool pirates. Have you guys got to actually play in I'm any of the events? I'm super excited for the dinosaurs. <laughs> Have you guys got to play in any pre-release events? Dinosaurs were pretty popular amongst everything, so we're so we're pirates. So I'm really excited to see what we open out of this box. All right, let's check out our first pack, guys. Looks like we have Treasure Map. All right, so Treasure Map. Um, it is one of the new trans one of the Transforms cards in in this set. They did something a little differently with the Transform card, which was kind of cool. All of the transform cards transform into lands, which is having different having a different ability as it to just oppose to turning into a creature or to another t another creature is really cool. Hmm. So with treasure map or treasure map in particular, it's a two mana cost artifact. Pay one, tap it, scry one, um, put a landmark counter on it. Once you have what is it three or three. more, yep. um, you get to transform it and you get three um, treasures. Which, if you guys played in the pre-release over the weekend, treasures I actually got to play this card. Well, how was this card actually um, limited? I felt like this card, if you drop it early, it really smooths out your draws. Um, I could descry a couple useless lands to the bottom and just keep mm -hmm. pumping out dinos. That was pretty good. And then when it flipped, uh, like uh, Eric said, that it gives you three treasures, and then it has an ability. Tap, sacrifice a treasure, draw a card. Anything that lets me draw a card without paying mana, I'm super excited for. Yep, and in addition to this, it still just saps for colorless mana, so you won't be down any lands or anything after that after sacrificing any other treasures. So. And the flavor is super cool. It's mm -hmm. a map that leads you to a land that's loaded with treasure. Yeah, very that's cool. pretty sweet. Again, fl like just like Amonkhet and Hour of Devastation and even Shadows and Battle, like they did a lot of really cool thematic stuff for each of these sets. Yeah. It's, speaking of which, there's one of our little treasure, treasure uh, tokens. Okay, so our our in this pack is Tokatli Honor Guard. It is a white and a colorless for a 1-3. Uh, creatures enter the battlefield don't cause their abilities to trigger. Cool, so it's so a Topor Orb. So it's a Topor Orb. Okay, it's a Topor Orb that you can search for with Collected Company. Yes. Or, um, sorry, Collected Company and Court of Calling. Yes, so, I mean, in standard right now, there's not a whole lot of cards that's, that this is going to stop, but, mm -hmm. I mean, just thinking of some of the cards that it stops in Modern, Thought Not Seer, um, Elvish Visionary. Yeah. And a few other cards, Kitchen Finks. So it might fit into the uh, Green White Hate Bear sideboard. Mm -hmm. Or even that's just like cool. there's a there's a mono white taxes list that kind of runs around from time to time, and Black White Eldrazi that's a taxes style deck as well that this could probably slot right into. Okay. All right, 
And in this pack, we got Vraska's Contempt. What's this card do? That says that you exile target creature or planeswalker and you gain two life. It's an instant. Um, the fact that this is an instant over the uh, hour card that was uh, a never sorcery return. Yep. Uh, in the last set is a huge bonus. And I think that this could help control decks, decks come back a little bit. Um, it can also exile a uh, animated planeswalker, which is pretty nice. Instead so of just, Gideon. Yeah, you can exile Gideon with it. I know Gideon's leaving soon, but... Yeah, it's a little, um, little too late for, for today yeah. with allies in the car, but... Yeah, so this card's fair. Um, I mean, this, this card is a little little bit of a harking back to some cards that we've already seen Heroes in the downfall. past. Um, I mean, not just Heroes Downfall, like Anguish Unmaking mm -hmm. and um, Utterin for over the past few years of different black-based spells like that that have had an exile, but lose, lose life. This one gains, though. Oh, well, that's unheard of. Yeah. <laughs> Plus it has sweet Vraska art turning somebody into stone. <laughs> this card is sweet. All right. I think this card could actually see some play in standard. Um, definitely play this card in limited. This card is great in limited. Yes. All right. Our rare in this pack is, well, I mean, okay. found catacombs. Yeah. I'm actually uh, super excited that these buddy lands, or you may have heard them called check lands, are yeah. getting reprinted. M10 lands for some of you who have played for quite a while. Yeah, M10, Innistrad, uh, M13, yep. stuff like that. Um, these have always been a commander staple, so it's really cool for you commander players. Uh, this set has a lot to offer for you, but these are also going to be great in standard coming up. I mean, yeah, these lands were in standard for a very, very, very long time. Yes. Um, these lands made mana really, really good. Perfect mana bases during RTR. Yeah, and yeah mana bases were disgustingly good. Um, I'm not. I'm sure it's going to be much of the same because we have the cycle lands yes. that count as the land types for all of these, basically, yes. which That's is really huge. cool. Um, so it's going to make a lot more three color decks could potentially viable, especially if you have a lot more access to lands that are going to not come into play tapped all the mm -hmm. time. But we also have one of the uncommons that we kind of wanted to talk okay, about. Okay, cool. Um, we have walk the plank. So this is two black sorcery destroy target non merfolk creature. For those of you guys who have been playing. You, know, you say the green black delirium or green black counters you you relied pretty heavily on grasp of darkness yeah as a removal spell this is a strict upgrade even though it's at sorcery speed because it's just straight kill a guy there were some good parts about grasp of darkness that could kill gods but right. um beyond that this is pretty good <coughs> and um i don't think we're gonna see a uh merfolk deck for a little while so I mean, go, I think actually going back to Vraska's um spell it, it will get rid of some of the new yeah. gods get, get rid of get rid of hazard and ronis Scarab God, Locust God, Scorpion God, you know, all those guys that can be kind of a pain or keep coming back from the graveyard. Yeah. Could be a nice way to deal with this. Again, Walk the Plank, great card. I look forward to seeing what how much impact it has on standard, at least in the first couple weeks. All right, we got probably one of the best cards in the set for standard. We got Carnage Tyrant. Oh boy. <laughs> Where do we start with this guy, Morgan? Um, Let's just talk about how great it's gonna be in standard. Well, I mean, he's a, he's a six mana, seven six. But the key part here is that he can be countered, he is trampled, and he has hexproof. Yes. So it's pretty much the complete package wrapped up, ready for you on Christmas morning. So, but, um, green mages. You remember how you like to play a card called Gaia's Revenge? This is Gaia's Revenge, but no haste. So, basically, is this going to be the curve topper in, say, like a Naya Dinosaurs or a Green Red Dinosaurs deck? I definitely think Green Red is going to have some action coming up. And uh, definitely maybe even Naya. Could it just be just a like just a top end for even just a maybe there's a mono green deck out there. Yes. Maybe there's just like just a a Naya good stuff deck. Not necessarily just dinosaurs, but I mean like we have like cards like Glorybringer. Wait, so so imagine on uh turn five playing a Regiosaur Alpha and it gives all of your other dinosaurs haste and makes a three three dude. Turn six or five, you're just going directly into this guy and he gets haste. That's gonna be gross. I mean I sign me up. Yeah, I hope we open a Regisaur Alpha I mean, so I get to show I've, you guys. I've been tinkering a little bit with the Naya Dinosaurs list. Mm -hmm. I haven't had as much time as I would like to be able to sit down and put final numbers together to it, but hopefully I can get that done over the next couple of days. And have Carnage a sweet... Tyrant is going to be a card that shakes oh, up Oh, it's, it's going to be in the deck for sure. All right. We have an interesting one. We have Old, old Growth Dryad. So it's one mana for a 3-3. Three, three. When this card enters the battlefield, each opponent may search their library for basic land and put it into play tapped. Hmm. One mana, three, three, pretty good. I can see, like, say, modern Revolt Zudex wanting this card. Maybe. Maybe. Um, 
But the downside is it lets your, your opponent go find a basic. Now, if we're think, thinking just strictly in the main Legacy Modern, not many of those decks are going to carry a lot of basics. I was so it's not about, going to be... Uh, I was thinking this might actually have a home in uh, Legacy or Vintage because of that reason. True. There's a lot of really aggressive, low to the ground green decks that uh, try and stick a threat turn one, mm -hmm. like Delver or uh, what's uh, the Nibble Mongoose? Yeah, Nibble Mongoose. Yeah. that's the guy I was thinking of. So this could very well be in that. What about Standard? Uh, I mean, excluding this calls. Yeah, I mean, it, one green it, for a three three is costed. still very good. Yeah. So we'll just have to see. <coughs> I think I think it has a place. Like again, like it could be just that Naya Gusev. If you remember back like back in the cons days where we had like the Amzan aggro deck, where it had just premium one drop, premium two drop, premium three drop. Mm -hmm. We're almost back to that. So we could uh possibly see something something along that lines re re pop back up. What do we got right. our next one? So we got a big uh just Timmy like have fun because it's cool card. This card is Star of Extinction. Um, and it says that you destroy a land and deal 20 damage to all creatures and, and each planeswalker. So, so we were actually talking about this <laughs> one kind of briefly off camera. What if this means we have no dinosaurs and rivals of Ixalan? Don't tell me that, Griff. I'm sorry to break your heart, <laughs> but like... Jurassic Park is my favorite movie. Like when I see Star of Extinction, I think like the extinction event that happened to the dinosaurs millions and millions and millions of years ago. Could this be much of the same? The Gatewatch is going to team together and defeat a giant meteor. Calling it now. You, you do realize <laughs> Jace has no memory of who he is. All right, all right. Keep breaking my dream. Um, Sorry, it's what I do, guys. <laughs> if you've been around the shop, you know this. <laughs> this card is basically a board wipe uh, in Commander. Um, Commander, it's gonna, this card is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to say goodbye, Vraska. Goodbye, all of her planeswalkers. It's um, like, oh, you thought you were ahead? Yeah. Not so much. Yeah, this card's fun. Um, like, you guys, like, I know I know some of you red mages and, and commander like to play a Blasphemous Act. This is Blasphemous Act number two for you. And uh, it, it does fun stuff with Stuffy Doll, maybe Boris Reckoner, stuff like that. I don't think this will have much of a standard home unless there's, like, a blue-red control deck that kind of builds up there and uses it as a board wipe, but... You might be right, but I I'm, I might prove you wrong. Okay, I hope you do. <laughs> I might be playing in the sideboard for nine dinosaurs. Okay. All right, let's if see what else we got. If there's a Planeswalker deck around, it gets rid <laughs> of them all. All right. I mean, so does our Devastation for the most part, so. All right, we have Sword Point Diplomacy. What in the world does this card do? So right. it's black, black to colorless for a sorcery. Reveal top three cards of your library. For each of those cards, put that card into your hand unless any opponent pays three life, then exile the rest. So it's a Punisher mechanic. Yeah. I don't think this card is very good. I don't either. Um, Anytime you give your opponent options. Exactly. They're going to take, obviously, the most favorable for them. But um, I think that it could be a way to regas either way. In uh, formats where you have four of each card instead of one of each card, I don't think this card will be good at Commander at all. Not at this all. This card won't get played. But um, I think in standard, if there's an aggressive, like super low to the ground, maybe black red deck. I think that this might maybe like a black play. red pirate deck. Yeah, maybe. I mean, because the three life isn't isn't anything to joke laugh at. Especially if you're just under all kinds of but pressure. If you top deck three lands, then they're just going to be like take them. So maybe there's a chance. I mean, we'll see. But we also have another uncommon that we kind of want to talk about. Cool. We have uh, Ixalan's Binding. Okay. So this is a three mana, or sorry, white three colorless for an enchantment. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent opponent controls. But it also has another effect stapled onto this that players can't play the card that's exiled. Playing cards with the same name as the card that is exiled. So say, say your opponent played a Chandra Torch of Defiance. Okay. Your next turn, you untap, you play this card. They can no longer play Chandra Torch of Defiance as long as she is under that card. That's that's pretty that good. That seems pretty pretty good. Yeah. The problem is we also already have another four mana O-ring effect. That happens at instant speed. Yes. Uh, cast out. Cast out. Can also be cycled to replace itself if it's not mm -hmm. needed. Or to try to catch up. So do you think this card is good enough to see any sort of play in standard? I think the cycle ability of cast out is still way better. I agree. But once that cycles out, this will still be a fine option. Um, <coughs> I think also some decks might want to double up on their exile effects. So. I think that's also true. I think I can see this as... The decks that play cast out in the main. This could also get rid of Hazoret pretty well. 
Correct. So the decks that play um, cast out in the main, if they feel they need to just swap evenly, mm -hmm. say bring in two of these to replace two of the four cast outs, as just like an alternate effect to stop other planeswalkers or anything like that. So it could, it could right. see some play in standard. Yeah. We got Rampaging Ferocidon. Oh, this card's sweet. Yeah. All right. It is a three mana red card and it has menace and players can't gain life. And it says whenever a creature enters the battlefield, uh, Rampaging Ferocidon deals one damage to that creature's controller. So um, it's, and it's a, a three three. Yeah, it's a it's a three three. Um, it has a bunch of just good red abilities stapled onto it. Um, I think that this card could see, definitely see play in uh, the red deck coming up that is surviving from... Yeah, Romanoff Red is so surprisingly yes. untouched. And it's got a couple of really key upgrades and like basically replacing Lightning Strike for in, for, with in, from Incendiary Flow, which is a strict upgrade. You get to play at instant speed. You mm -hmm. don't have to worry about trying to play on your own turn. The last time we had like an effect like this in Standard, where it was an effect where players can't gain life, I believe it goes all the way back to like Shadow More Even Tide days with like Everlasting Torment and Stigma Lasher. Hmm. Okay. Um, Stigma Lasher was a two-two for two red. That once it hit hit a player, they can't gain li gain life for the rest of the game. Wow. Okay. Which is in mono red decks back then was absurd. Um, this being at a a three three for three mm -hmm. makes it a very serviceable bo serviceable body. Yeah. I don't know if there's enough life gain in standard for it to matter. For it to really matter. Okay. But the menace and the sort of impact trimmers type yes. of effect might come into play. I think that this card is going to be really good at making combat math hard for your opponent, especially mm -hmm. um, like with the Registor Alpha we keep mentioning. Yep. Very good card. Hope you open it. But um, given this guy haste and then having menace, they probably aren't going to be able to block it, or it's going to be at a great cost to them. So mm -hmm. I think that if, if there is a red-green dinosaur deck, this guy will be in it. I think so, too. All right. Been a pretty decent box so far. I have a lot yeah. of cool stuff to talk about. All right. So our rare in this pack is Dead Eye Tracker. And this guy is one black mana for a 1-1 one -one with black and a generic. Tap, exile two cards from an opponent's graveyard, he explores. Which, actually this is a new mechanic in, for this set. So explore is, fill the top card of your library, put that card into your hand if it's a land, otherwise put a 1-1 counter on it. Okay. Uh, then you get to choose to put the card back on top or put it put into your graveyard. So explore did a lot of really cool things, really some really neat things over the weekend in, in, in pre-release from what yes. I got the chance to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were, we were busy helping guests at the same time events were going on, so we really didn't get a chance to walk and see as much magic as we would have liked to. Um, but I know in the event that I played, um, I had a few things I had to explore. Yeah. They, 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 were, they were fine. They're not... Some of them are, are fairly aggressively costed. I like the 2-1 merfolk. That, that card, if we, if we open that card, we'll talk about him a little bit. Um, I think that card will be pretty... That card could see some waves in standard. Maybe we might see the talking of a blue-green merfolk deck in modern. No, I don't think so. I'm saying maybe. Maybe it might be a thing now. <laughs> Finally have green merfolk. We'll see. Um, but we also have another one of the uncommons that we kind of want to talk about. Okay. I seem to have this track record of opening these things. Get all the good uh, ones. Field of Ruin. Cool. So this card is really, really cool. Um, it is task for uh, colorless mana. Two, sacrifice it. You should target non-basic land. An opponent controls, and each player searches their library for a basic and puts it into play tapped. We haven't seen a land that does this in a long time. Yeah. It's been since, I would say, what, Ghost Quarter? Then we've had a land that just even straight, then, up, straight up just destroyed a land. There's a lot of uh, people in the blue-white control communities that are talking about this card. For modern. For modern. Absolutely. Because um, it, it basically will, just replaced Tech Edge. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but um, maybe as a companion. But this is good because uh, it brings a basic out of your deck and doesn't leave you behind on resources when Ghost Quarter, on the other hand, would. Yeah, absolutely. And in Commander, you can get rid of like a pesky Maze of Ith or Guy's Cradle, and then everybody else gets to ramp, which is kind of cool. Which is kind of cool. So this could be in like a group hug type deck, something like mm -hmm. that. It could be really sweet. Um, I think this might actually end up being the one of the lands that other mono-colored decks kind of needed in Standard, too. Mm. So like... In red, we already have some really good non-basic lands between Sun Scorched Desert and Ramen Up Ruins. I mean, this could possibly see play alongside of those in that deck. But I think this might give more of an 
more options to say like a mono, like a white weenie style deck with we have a bunch of vampires and we have um, the Legion card from this set that hopefully we open it. We can talk about that card a little bit. Um, but I think this just gives a lot of different play to maybe some different mono colored decks in standard. Yeah. And and do not be surprised to see this card pop up in modern. All right, let's check, take a look at our next card. We got Dire Fleet Ravager. Dire Fleet Ravager is a black, black, and three generic. He has Menace and Death Touch, and he's a 4-4. Four, four. And when he enters the battlefield, each player loses a third of his or her life rounded up. Um, this card is a Punisher. This um, card's neat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw this card spoiled. I automatically just thought, like, oh, man. There's commander decks that would love this card. Yeah. Pretty much any of them that play black. Yeah, um, this guy is a big punisher. He might be a curve topper in some weird black deck. We also might see him come back to the battlefield through a God Pharaoh's Gift. Something oh, like that's that. Gross. That could be pretty good. That could be pretty gross. Um, but yeah, this guy's fun. Um, I don't think he's super crazy pushed, but I think that he's definitely a leader. <coughs> yeah, I think he's definitely cool. Um, Commander-wise, he's gonna have he's gonna see a lot of play. I think a lot of people a lot of have a lot of fun, and I think you're right. Like, there are a lot of different options now that we can do with God Pharaoh's mm -hmm. gift, not just a blue white version, but like, I have thought about maybe messing around with like say like a Naya version of dinosaurs with God Pharaoh's gift, and the Black Explorer guy that we just saw mm -hmm. put stuff in your graveyard. Sure does. Cool. All right, what do we got this time around? Oh, we got a foil. I don't know if we really do. We really need to talk about that, that guy. That's cool. He's fun. Uh, I guess we'll talk about him briefly. Uh, snapping Sailback, uh, he is green for green four colorless for a flash four four with Enrage. Enrage is one of the new mechanics, which triggers an effect whenever they're dealt damaged. Yeah. So this one is in particular whenever he's dealt damage, put a one one counter on him. Pretty neat. I think this card is one of the premium uh, draft cards for di the dinosaur mechanic. Oh God, yes. Um, him having flash, just being able to block a weaker guy and turn into a five five. That's pretty good. Um, I think that he's going to also be an auto-include to any of the dinosaur decks that are popping up. So um, There's much better five drops. <laughs> but for the dinosaur deck. There's much better All right, five what rate did we get? <laughs> uh, we got Sanctum Seeker. So this guy is two black, two generic. Black Hellrider. For a 3-4. And whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses a life, you gain a life. You guys remember Hellrider, right? This guy doesn't have haste, unfortunately. but No, but he's still pretty absurd. Yeah. If there's an aggressive, like, black-white vampires deck, this is your guy. And there's the three-mana uh, creature, the, the Vampire Lord, mm -hmm. the legendary. Yep. That whenever a non-token yep. vampire attacks, yep. you create a 1-1 one, one token. Yep. That's pretty cool. Maverin. Maverin. Yes. Thank you. That was our producer, Jeremy, if you happen to hear him in the background. <laughs> All right, guys. Ooh, okay. Oh, all right, cool. I am super excited about this card. Um, Sorcerer's for, Spyglass. Yeah, it's Sorcerer's Spyglass. Uh, for you guys who don't know, I play uh, Legacy Eldrazi, and um, I play. I used to play Pithing Needles in the side. I'm going to test this out. But uh, Ancient Tomb can play this on turn one. Uh, City of Traitors, I don't know if you'd want to play a City of Traitors on turn one, but uh, any of the other yeah, Eldrazi lands to. with Simeon Spirit Guide can play this on turn one. So um, I've seen this card do some gross things already. Um, being able to land that against Delver and seeing they only have one fetch land uh, in their hand, that's gross. They scoop immediately. I'm really excited about this card in uh, <coughs> Legacy, but I think it has other applications. I think it's okay in Commander. Yeah, actually, I think this card could see a lot of play in Standard just because it does... Um, when you, there's not a lot of premium... Uh, just look at your hand and make your opponent discard. Yeah. So getting free, getting information just by playing a card, even if you're able to just go say, oh, I play this on two mana, say I'm playing against dinosaurs, and I see the new red, red, white planeswalker in their hand, you're like, all right, well, I don't want to have to really deal with that, so we'll name that. Yes. That's pretty cool. Which is kind of cool. It also happens to, like, if uh, the new Jace happens to be popular. Like, Gideon of the Trials mm -hmm. we know is going to be popular. So, like, you can do that on two and then basically shut off their turn three play. It's kind of kind of gross. Yeah, I like it. All right. So we have Conqueror's Galleon. All right. So this is another one of the, one of the Transform cards. So this is four mana for an artifact vehicle. It's a 210. 
When it attacks, exile at the end of combat, and then returns the battlefield under your control with a crew cost of four. The crew cost is a lot. Mm -hmm. It I is a 210. I don't know what deck's going to really want this, but on the other side, it turns into Conqueror's Foothold, which is a land, uh, taps out of colorless mana, and then it has a bunch of other different abilities. Uh, two, tap, draw a card, discard a card. Hmm. Looting's nice. Um, four mana, just straight up draw a card. Reasonable. Yeah. Um, and then six mana, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Also okay. very reasonable. Okay. So, I don't, again, I don't know if this card's going to see any play in standard, but commander players are going to love this card. Yes. They will find ways <laughs> to crew this card, get it to attack, flip it, and just do some really absurd things with it. And we both love the flavor. It's a pirate ship that takes you to a Treasure Island. <laughs> no, actually, I don't even know if this was really Treasure Island. This might be more than like prison. Okay, yeah. That one's Conqueror's <laughs> Foothold, so that one takes you to jail. <laughs> go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not okay. collect $200. Cool. We got another uh, check land. This is Rootbound Crag. Again, um, we, we talked about it with, dra with uh, Drawn Catacombs already. These cards were these were much needed with um, the Battlelands rotating out and the peak land or in the the reveal lands yes. from Shadows leaving. I love However, the new art. Artwork on these on these lands yes. is freaking phenomenal. There yes. is a dinosaur in just about every art, which is really cool. All Except right. for maybe Drawn Catacombs, I think it might have pirates in it. Yeah, I think which kind of like makes sense. A shipyard. All right. Well, that's our next one. All right. Okay. We have Goring Ceratops. So this is two white, five generic for a three three. Seems a little overcosted at that at that mana cost, but yeah. it has a bunch of other well, a few other abilities. It has double strike for one, which is seven mana for a three three double strike. Mm. Eh, a little overcosted, but I'd, I'd play it unlimited. What's its second ability deal? Oh boy, this is <laughs> this was this is a neat one. Uh, when he attacks, all other creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn. All other creatures. All other creatures. But remember, guys, that a lot of the, most of the dinosaurs in this set have trample. Yes. That is gross with double strike. Certainly is. And when you get the guy, bring this guy in on the cheap off of Bogon Pharaoh's gift, mm, yeah. an alpha strike, mm. and he's on curve to gain haste <coughs> from the other guy. So <laughs> somebody will cur will do that. Somebody will curve turn four Regisar into turn five Carnage Tyrant, turn six this guy, and you'll be like, I just got eaten alive by dinosaurs. I just got dinoed out. <laughs> I, I I don't get it. It, it, it. These are this is this is something that's going to happen, and it will be glorious, especially if it happens on camera this weekend in Dallas. Also, guys, if you want to be guaranteed to pull one of these guys, you can check out the red white Planeswalker deck. One of those comes inside. Oh yeah, it is. Yep. I forgot. I not actually really looked at the deck list for those, but yeah. All right, guys, we got Revel in Riches. Oh boy. It's a five mana enchantment. It's black. Oh, and it this says, card. Yes. <laughs> it's like the fun, weird way to win card of the set. It's a so, metallurgic summoning. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Or no, it's um, mechanized production. Yes. Uh, whenever a creature and opponent controls dies, create a colorless treasure, car a treasure artifact token with tap sacrifice this artifact. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Okay, that's all right. But then it says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more treasure, you win the game. So um, this card plays pretty well with treasure map. With treasure map, with and uh, anointed procession, and that card you just mentioned, mechanized production, and mechanized production. Do it, somebody! I have faith in you. <laughs> My casual standard players, <laughs> please on Friday let me see this happen. <laughs> it will make my night. <laughs> All right. All right, we have Arcane Adaptation. So this card is a blue, yeah, two generic sweet. enchantment. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, name a, tr name a creature type. Creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to their other types. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. This is awesome. For Commander. For Commander. And for some other casual decks, um, this, uh, for, let's say, uh, Reaper King, for instance, every creature that you cast is now a Scarecrow. That means every uh, every, every creature, every creature kills something. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's Vindicate something. 
Um, but these effects are awesome. And you can also uh, call slivers. Yes, yes. Uh, or rats, it's another uh, or pretty rats. popular team that works together. Or now pirates. Yes, so I'm really happy with this card. Um, I think that we're going to see it pop up in a lot of commander <coughs> decks, like stuff like mm -hmm. blue green elves, maybe Azuri, stuff yeah. like that. Dragons too. Again, like, you can search for any card in your deck with Scion now because oh, of yeah. this. Oh yeah, yeah, that That's is very cool. true. Again, over the past several sets, um, development has really given us a lot of different tools to cater to every play type. Yes. Whether it be commander, just sixty card casual, and then us, us, us spikes as us competitive players. Mm-hmm. Which like, means, whether you believe it or not, Wizards is always listening to us. <laughs> All right, we got Death Gorge Scavenger. All right, this guy's cool. When Griff and I both uh, saw this card, we're like, that's like scavenging, scavenging use light, right? So in some um, regards, actually better. Um, so what this guy is, green two generic for three two. Um, when he enters the battlefield or attacks. You may exile a target card from your graveyard. If it's a creature card exiled this way, gain two life. Pretty, pretty sweet. Pretty much yeah. what scavenging use does. He doesn't get a plus one, plus one counter. But actually, he does. If you exile a non-creature card, he gets a plus one, plus one counter. He gets plus one until end of turn. Oh, it is only until end of turn. Yes. S but still, so there is, a, there is definitely going to be that, those players who want to try to play the blue-red spells deck. Yes. The blue-white approach deck. Mm-hmm. Those decks will rely heavily on Torrential Gearhawk to buy back spells at times. You get this in under that, you can start eating certain spells. Yes. And getting in there for four damage a turn, which is pretty sweet. Being able to exile their glimpse, uh, glimpse yeah, their, is pretty yeah. good. The Glimmer of Genius. Glimmer of Genius, yes. Amongst other things, like getting rid of Lightning Strikes if they've yeah. had to burn them early. So this will be good for the Green Dinosaur deck, maybe as a sideboard card against, uh, against the... Uh, Blue-red mm -hmm. spells. So we're in this pack. We're not going to really talk a whole bunch. It's some Puddle Grove. It's just the, the green-white buddy land. We were running whatever Rootbound Crag, Drown Catacombs. Again, really happy that these cards are back in standard. Yeah. Again, phenomenal artwork. And I'm excited we're getting a ton of those in our box because... Um, opening the stuff so far for the shop, it's been about three to four per box. Okay. So we'll have enough. Our next card is Herald of Secret Streams. And it is a four drop. Uh, blue Merfolk Warrior, it's a 2-3, and it says creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them can't be blocked. I think that this guy will work really well with Metallic Mimic. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, two generic mana, uh, <coughs> it's a 2-1, and it says when it enters you name a creature type. Creatures with the chosen type enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on them. Um, and people are also talking about uh, Herald of Secret Streams for their Marchesa Commander deck that um, whenever a creature dies with a plus one counter on it, it comes back to the battlefield. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that sounds pretty sweet. <laughs> we finally found a bad one. <laughs> All right, Verdant Sun's Avatar. Uh, two green, five generic, four, five, five. When he enters a battlefield or another creature enters a battlefield, you gain life equal to the creature's toughness. Boring. Very, very boring. And I'm going to kill you with it in Commander. No, you won't. <laughs> All right, you don't play Commander anymore. Hey, hey. I'm thinking about <laughs> rebuilding Marin of Clan Toth. No, no Toth. <laughs> just so I can have people be miserable. But, you know. We got another flip card. We got Search for Azkanta. Wow, it you says, struggled with that one a little bit. I know, bit. yeah. Something went on up there. <laughs> it's a two minute. Words are hard. Blue enchantment, especially made up words. <laughs> right. But, um, it's a legendary enchantment. It says, at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put it into your graveyard. Then if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, you may transform it. And so what's it transform into? Side. It transforms into Azkanta, the Sunken Ruin. OK. It's a land, it's a legendary land that taps for blue. And it says, uh, two generic blue, and then tap this land. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. That that uh, bottom effect is pretty sweet, but I this think it's a little This card is absurd. Slow. Okay. What do you think that so, it can do We had the blue-white approach deck that was right around a little bit last standard. This card helps them dig faster. Okay. 
it gives them a mana sink where they can have once they, once this is flipped, they can literally just sit there and hold up Glimmer, Supreme Will, this card, any other counter magic. So like you don't know what you're going to run into with like if with that deck. It anyway. is nice at the two mana slot, but how many of these do you think they'll play? Maybe two, maybe three. I could see that and then just mill the, the ones they don't need. Mm -hmm. We also got a foil rare in our pack. We got Entrancing Melody. What do you think about that card, Eric? It's Dominate. Yep. Just not an instant speed. Yep. Do you think this card will see any play? Maybe. Commander, for sure. <laughs> Standard might be a little too slow. All right. I mean, by the time you're trying to, you know, get to enough mana to, you like, know, just play nab a, Hulk instead. Yeah. Um, nab a giant dinosaur, you're already kill dead. Kill something. Yeah. Yeah, you just kill it. <coughs> All right. Well, we got another Ooh. one of the transform cards. I do like this one. So we got um, our goal is blood fast. It is black generic mana for a legendary enchantment. This actually has one of my favorite effects on it. Of, greed. of all time, of greed. Yes. So it's black, generic mana, pay two life, draw a card. Those of you who played during mono black days with, Th uh, with Theros, Underworld. You, you had Erebos. Oh, that too, yeah. People had a lot of fun playing that card. I'm probably going to have a lot of fun playing this card. So, but it also has another effect. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have five or less life, uh, you may transform it. And what's a tra what it transforms into is Temple of, oh boy. We, oh boy, we have. I'm not even going to tr try and pronounce Temple them. of Aklazoft. Aklazoft. Temple of Aklazoft, guys. <laughs> Works for me. Um, and then you just tap out of black mana or tap sacrifice a creature, gain life equal to sacrifice creature's toughness. So, uh, black market. So it's a. It's, um, high market. High market. High market, yeah. Or um, Mare in the Moaning Well. Mm -hmm. um, this card is sweet. I'm definitely going to see a lot of fun, fun thing, do a lot of fun things in Commander. I think this might actually have a chance to do some stuff in Standard as well, because hmm. it gives, say, like a, a black the aggressive, deck some like gas. a black red pirate deck, mm -hmm. a way to refuel. Yeah, which could be, which could be, yeah, could make that deck really gross. I don't think that we'll see much effect from the uh, last half of the flip ability, but I think that we can just look <coughs> at this as a very cheap greed. Actually, there, and there's an uncommon in here that I kind of want briefly talk about. Sure. Um, it is Rigging Runner. Oh, yeah. Uh, we talked about this a little bit when we first mm -hmm. saw this card spoiled. So this guy's one red mana for a 1-1 one, one first strike with um, the raid mechanic, which we saw the raid mechanic back in cons. More in particular, we saw a lot of Wingmate Rock. You guys remember how absurdly powerful that card was. I mean, this is definitely no Wingmate Rock, but for the mono red decks, um, it, when, it when it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter, if you attack with a creature this turn, so making a 2-2 first striker for one red mana is something that, honestly, that the mono red decks are going to, going to be able to utilize very, very well. Because they're losing Falkenrath Gorger, and this is basically the one drop that is just going to replace that. Okay. Because you, yeah. you, you can just look at a, a mono red deck now of Bomat Courier, Inventor's Apprentice, this guy. That's, that's 12 pretty good one drops. All right. We got Dream Color Siren as our rare for that pack. It's a four mana cost, flash flying. I like it already. It says it can only block creatures with flying, so it's a high flyer. When Dreamcaller's Siren enters the battlefield, if you control a pirate, tap up to two non-land permanents. So this guy's pretty good uh, if you want to play him on your turn to get through with some guys. Or maybe as a defensive mechanic, you tap down two of their attackers so that way they can't attack you. That or time. on their umkeep, you tap two of their lands. Yeah. That is not that bad. Oh, never mind. Not land permanent. My well, bad. I misread the card. <laughs> so, right. still fine. Pretty good and limited. Could see some standard play. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, maybe if there's like a blue white flash style deck. Yeah. Could see. A th could see some play. All right. We have next one up is Waker of the Wilds. It is two green, two generic, for a three three, with the ability of green green. X, put X one one counters on target land you control. That land becomes a zero zero elemental creature token with haste, and it's still a land. So let me just start off by saying if you get this card limited, it's utterly disgusting, and you almost yes. can't lose. Um, the guy who won one of the events I played in had one of those in his deck, and he just wrote it to victory. And I'm pretty sure there's a commander deck out there that really likes this card. 
Titania. I believe it's Titania. <laughs> yes. I think I've noticed a recurring theme <laughs> of cards over the past few sets of them kind of like, you know, hey, Titania, here's, here, yes. let's push you a little farther off that cliff. Yes. A little closer to being maybe banned. <laughs> no. <laughs> <coughs> but We've yeah. seen worse things. Yes, we have. Um, so there's actually, again, we found another uncommon that we should probably talk about. Sure. Uh, Sentinel Totem. So this is one mana for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, scry one. And it has tap, exile, uh, sentinel totem, exile all cards from all graveyards. Okay. So it's pretty much like a relic, relic of progenitus. Relic progenitus, yeah. Which is really cool. We, have not, we haven't seen this effect in a little while in standard. I mean, we had crooked combination, but you had to pay mana into that. And mm -hmm. it was good for what it was, but we have this. This is basically just a replacement. This is relic card. light. It's fine in standard. So we, we, we've, you've already heard us mention that Godfrey's Gift. Several different varieties of that deck will probably be running around. Yes. This card says that deck can go away. Or at least be slowed down to a point. And it gives you the benefit of a scry for, mm -hmm. for your hate. It's, it's Relic Light. That's what it is. Yep. It's still, I think it's going to be a very good card. Outside of Standard, I don't know if we'll see much play, but... All right. Standard, for sure. Our next pack is Blood Crazed Paladin. And it is black and one. It has flash. It's a vampire knight, the ever important creature type. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, uh, it enters the battlefield with a plus one counter on it for each creature that died this turn. I don't remember seeing this card in play at all this weekend. Again, I, we really didn't get to watch a whole lot of magic being played. Um, but this card seems sweet. Yes. Getting to trick your opponent into like a pretty bad attack. And then flash. Yeah, you, this yeah. In. You just make you make your opponent think that you're making like really terrible attacks. Yes. And yet, basically, they block accordingly. And let you let a couple things die. You're like, oh, here's this three three or four four. Yeah. So. Good luck. This card's pretty good. Um, it's not pushed or anything. It's not nope. crazy, but it's definitely serviceable. We might see some play with it, especially with Bontu's reckoning. Hmm. Especially with Bontu's last Ooh, reckoning. Good okay. call. <laughs> Oh, yes. All right. Well, we got another another one of the transform cards. So this one is Dousing Dagger. It's a two mana for an equipment. When it enters a battlefield, target opponent creates a zero two, or creates two zero two green plant creature tokens with Defender. Equipped creature gets plus two plus one, has equipped cost of two. And whenever it deals, equipped creature deals damage to a player, you may transform it. Now, what's it transform into? Lotus Veil. Is this the one that transforms into the Lotus Veil? Yep. yep. Oh, it sure is. And it turns into Lost Veil, which is basically just tap, add three mana of any color to your mana pool. We like adding extra mana to our mana pool. So, uh, another Commander Insane card. Um, they've been giving us a bunch of really cool, but not quite the original cards, like uh, the card that turns into Guy's Cradle. This one turns into Lotus Veil. Yeah. There's another one that turns into Maze of Ith. Um, this card will be effective in Commander because you can give the... Uh, O2 plant tokens to one player and then attack another, and then it flips, ramping you. I think it's pretty good. Yep. That's so quite think, sweet. Yeah. All right. Ooh, Ooh. okay. We got Vraska Relic Seeker. <coughs> Vraska is a six mana cost uh, planeswalker, red green, and her. Black green. Black green. Or, yes, black green. And her uh, plus two says she creates a 2 2 black pirate with menace. So she starts at six, so getting a plus two right off the bat is not bad at all. Um, her neg three says uh, destroy target artifact, creature, or enchantment. And then you create a treasure uh, token. And then uh, her neg ten says target player's life total becomes one. So I think that uh, if you guys remember the five mana cost for Aska from uh, Return to Ravnica. Um, this one is kind of like a beefier version of that one. So her plus two is pretty different. The old Vraska says that uh, you choose target opponent, I believe. And then if any of their creatures deal damage to her, they get destroyed. N no mercy. Yeah. So um, so her plus two is pretty different. You create pressure on the board. but uh, And a way to protect yourself. And a way to protect yourself, again. But her neg three is the exact same thing as the old Vraska, except with the upgrade of you getting a treasure piece mm -hmm. additional. And then her neg 10 is also very similar. Her old, uh, her old form, 
Rascal I mean, the I mean Unseen. Assassins, right? Yeah, made three one-one assassins that when they hit a player, they they die. They, die, they lose the game. So mm -hmm. this puts him at one, effect effectively them losing the game. Mm -hmm. And you have to have her out for just three turns before that can happen because of her big accelerating plus two. Yeah, I, I think she's going to see a lot of play in standard. You think so? I think so. Okay. Um, so like, there's like green black constrictor is still going to be a deck. And this could be their curve topper outside of Verderous Cure Hulk. I could see her as a two of. Like it's gonna give that deck a little bit more play, give them a little bit more like it's a it's a planeswalker that comes down and can kill interacts, things yes. and interacts with the with the board, she, creates another dude. Yeah, she can t kill two things before dying herself, also, yeah, which is pretty absolutely. good. Absolutely. Which is very good. I mean it could just end up replacing like that deck would also run Omnixilus reignited, so yeah. she she could just replace Omnixilus. May he rest in peace. <laughs> And if, yeah, I mean, Vraska didn't make a whole lot of impact in, in Standard when she was first in. I played her. Ooh, all right, guys. This is probably our favorite card, and we've been talking about it all day. It's Regisaur Alpha. Alpha. We finally decided to open him. All, all right, right go so. For it, Drew. Red, green, three generic, four, four, four. Other dinosaurs you control have haste. I mean, sign me up already. Yeah. Yeah, like, but... I get to crash into the red zone with my dudes right as they come into play? Absolutely. But... But... You guys remember a little card called Thrag Tusk, right? Yeah. This card's better. Yeah, I agree. He brings a buddy with him that gets to attack immediately. Yes. He puts a 3-3 three, uh, three, three with Trample into the battlefield. And um, him being at the five converted mana cost slot, then you can uh, go into Carnage Tyrant. That's insane. So, so just just think of this is this is a very real curve. Mm -hmm. Turn to the new drover that gets plus two plus two if you control dinosaur attached for mana of any color. Mm -hmm. Turn four, this guy. Turn five, Carnage Tyrant. Yes. You're dead. <laughs> yep. You are basically dead. Yeah, I'm really excited about this card. I think this <coughs> is going to be one of the cards that changes standard. And I think that... This is uh, going to flip standard on its head. I think even the red deck could splash for this. Possibly. I, like, think I mean, so. it's a very... It would be... I don't know if it would be better in the mono red... Like, say, the Ramanop red deck. Mm -hmm. If it would be better than Glorybringer. Because, I mean, Glorybringer is absurd. Yeah, Glorybringer has haste, does its thing. It's good. And, I mean, and then the downside is this card does die to Glorybringer. Yeah. But he gets the bash in. It's, it's fine. It's totally <laughs> fine. All right. All right, nothing else spicy in that pack. Let's uh, let's get moving on. Oh, yeah, that that was you that opened that one. I'm jealous. Hey, you opened the Carnage Tyrant, man. Uh, okay. We got uh, Till <laughs> oh, Til Til and Nolly's oh, this Skin card. Shifter. <laughs> oh, this card. <laughs> it is a three mana cost creature. It's a zero one with, with haste. haste. With haste. And then when it attacks, it becomes a copy of another target non legendary attacking creature until end of turn. This card's fun. So, what can be fun about it is, I mean, there is the Roman Up Red deck that is running around. But, can you imagine playing this card in the Dinosaur deck where you get to make a copy of Carnage Tyrant or of any of the other seven drops that do dumb things? Like, yeah. give your attackers all double strike. Like, making additional copies of things is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. This card is absurd and limited, by the way. Is it? Okay. I mean, I had it played against me in, one, in, in the pre release that I did on Sunday. It didn't do a whole lot because all it did was copy the 1 3 flyer for 2. Then I just killed my opponent. Okay. But it's one of those things where he's just like, oh, I can play this on 3, attack with two two twos basically. And just then, keep your curve going, kind of. Yeah, and just keep your curve it's going. It's an upgrade. Like, yeah, it, just, it can just upgrade itself yeah. automatically as it's going. Well, oh, we, I see another card that we should probably talk about. It's finally my turn to open an uncommon that we both really like. Well, it's not an uncommon, buddy. That's or a common. It's a common. Common or uncommon. It's an op it's opt, and it's blue, instant, and it says scry one, draw a card. Um, so, modern players don't get too used to playing this card. <laughs> you remember Ponder, Preordain? This card is just as good. You will have access to the card for maybe a month. Uh, I don't know. I think that when maybe... When Storm starts top eighting on a regular basis and putting three or four copies into the top eight, this card will go away. Maybe. Um, I think that uh, it's an interesting balance between Serum Visions and this card. I think decks like Infect are going to want Opt because they can do it at instant speed. 
I think decks like Just Guy Control, which is sort of make a little bit of a comeback, want this as opposed to yeah. Sarah Visions. They can draw into a counter spell, draw into an answer, stuff like that. I mean, it just has more ways to play on on your opponent's turn as opposed to playing cards on your turn. But I think Storm might stick with Serum Visions. I don't think so. We'll see. All right. <sighs> Getting down to our last few packs, folks. Okay. Oh, okay. We got another fun one to talk about here. It's Captivating Crew. <laughs> Ren, three generic, four, four, three. <laughs> <coughs> Reasonably costed, power and toughness, for, for, a four, for a four mana spell, this is what I want, power and toughness wise. And has an additional ability though. Three, generic, red, colon, not tap, just colon, so you can repeat this effect. Yeah. Commander players, pay attention. Gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn, untap that creature, it gains haste. Only activated at any time you can activate a sorcery, makes sense. Yeah. Commander players, you like playing with Zealous Conscripts and things that take your opponent's cards? Have this a ball. Sweet. This card's going to do some <laughs> fun things. Yeah, this card's sweet. Um, I could see it in like um, most red decks, but I think uh, another another decks that uh, might really enjoy this are some red black sacrifice decks. Take your opponent's stuff, sacrifice them, get a cool effect, or maybe Zed Drew to kind of shift around who has what. That could be oh, cool. Oh yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we also have an uncommon that we can talk about briefly. Okay, cool. I think you we mentioned finally, this yeah, one earlier. Yeah, it's uh, Drover of the Mighty. Green, generic, 1-1. One, one. Okay, not bad. Yeah. Normally, it's, you think, you're thinking, like, say, maybe Elvis Visionary, maybe a Mana Dork. Hey, guess mm -hmm. what? It's a Mana Dork. Yeah. Master Mana of any color. If you happen to control a dinosaur, it gets plus 2, plus 2. We gets to become a big boy. Yeah, um... I think this card's fine because it'll help you accelerate into your dinosaurs. This card is and then, absurd. And then once you do, it'll be also an aggressive creature itself. Standard players, we were asking for good mana dorks. Watsy listened to us. <laughs> they gave us a good one. All right, we got another copy of Entrancing Melody Nonfoil. Um, we already talked about it being Dominate, and uh, I don't think we have to spend much more time on that one. No, no, no. Any, any pull on commons or anything like that? No. Nope. nope. All right. All right, we got what? You got one more pack over there? I do. All right, so we got three more packs to go. All right. Okay, this card's cool. We got to Settle the Wreckage. So what this card is, is two white, two generic, instant, exile all attacking creatures, target player controls, and that player may search his or a library for that many basic land cards and put those cards on the battlefield tapped. A lot of people have been talking about this card being really, really good. I think this card is really bad. Okay, so I agree with you, but I do want to make a caveat. I think that this will be good against decks like um, Ramen Up Red, for instance, because... No! Uh, you don't want to do that to them. So they're attacking you with four guys. Yeah. You're removing four of their 20 lands from their deck. They're going yeah. to draw straight gas. But and have more mana to activate Ramanop Ruins. They're one of the that, that uh, the extra lands won't help them that much, I think. It gives them more mana to activate Ramanop Ruins. All right. Yeah, but otherwise, other than that, this card's bad. Um, I mean, I think it, it is a necessary evil to have that card, so your, like, your blue-white approach decks will play it. But keep in mind, those of us who have played aggressive decks and are used to playing around four mana Wraths yeah. will see it coming. We won't walk into it that easily. Unless we want to. We got Fell Flagship. It's a three mana vehicle. Pirates you control get plus one plus O. Oh. And then when it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. It has uh, crew three. So And it's a three three. Yeah, it's a three three. A lot it's of threes. threes. A lot of threes. Um I think this card is okay as a little buff guy. Um I mean, this is basically unlimited. You're probably going to draft this if you see like pack two yeah. or three and you're already in pirates. Because it is just an anthem effect. It is an or orcish aura flame for your pirates. Yes. Which giving a lot of your pirates already have some form of innovation or can't be blocked or have menace or have flying. Like this is just gonna accelerate that clock for you. Yeah. You're never ever 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 gonna try to crew this thing. There's the uh, two mana guy that when it enters, it takes one of their cards until he leaves too. So yep. so if you ever do get around to crewing it and making them discard, it could be an aggressive way to And can we, can we just like real quick speak? All the vehicles in this set are pirate ships, which I can't believe you how 
tell you how unbelievably cool that actually is. Just like every single one of them is a pirate ship in some aspect or another, whether it be like a, a ghost ship type of thing, thinking mm -hmm. like Davy Jones's locker, st Davy Jones style from Pirates of the Caribbean and whatnot. But again, they hit another home run with just thematically how this set lays out yeah. and how everything was done. Like we give we give Wizards a lot of a lot of flack for messing with formats and making busted cards like Smuggler's Copter. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we want that card back in standard, please. <laughs> um, <coughs> but they really have done a very good job with set design overall over the past few years. Yeah. Which I think a lot of it comes down to, like, they've gone down to just two set blocks as opposed to the three sets. By the time you get to that third set, it's always been a crapshoot of, oh, here we go, here's another Dragon's Maze. All right, guys, we're on our last pack. Is it going to be a good one? Put a face down, <laughs> and we'll drum roll and then flip it. All right. Well, let me just make sure it's not a foil first. All okay, right, ready? It's not a foil. All no. right. Uh, it's oh, it's Deep Root Champion. Okay. It's a bad <laughs> one. So this is like Query on Dryad, right? Um, but worse. But worse. Um, so this card is green, generic mana, for a 1-1 Merfolk Shaman. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a 1-1 one -one counter on, on it. Sounds cool, cool in theory. Great mechanic. There's a card that, used to, that we used to see play back way back when, and I believe the first printing of it was Plane Shifts, called Query and Dryad, mm -hmm. where when you basically played a non-green spell, whether it be a creature or any other spell, it got a plus one, plus one counter. This card is worse. Query and Dryad was not that great. This card managed to be worse than that. This card and does limited, have the Merfolk. And uh, Limited, you'll probably still play this card. This card does have the Merfolk type, which is nice. And it combos with the four drop merfolk that says any cre any merfolks with plus one counters on them, mm -hmm. uh, or actually any creatures with plus one counters on them are unblockable. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. But um, and I know some people are definitely going to try some merfolk decks. So we'll see. I think those of you who are coming into to draft or wherever you happen to be drafting this weekend, mm -hmm. I would take a seriously strong look at playing just like a blue green merfolk deck if you can draft it, because it is going to be really under drafted and can be really absurdly powerful. Yeah, that guy that uh, adds plus one counters and takes them mm -hmm. off to draw cards. Yep. That guy's very good. The guy that animates lands is also very good. And just and just in general, because you know, like everybody's going to want to try to draft dinosaurs. Everybody's going to try to draft pirates. Everybody's going to try to draft vampires. All right. So, what do you think we would rate our box at? I'd probably put it if we're going off a scale of like of, of one to ten. I'd probably put it at a seven. Okay. Like I mean, we got Registrar Alpha. We got a Vraska. Mm -hmm. We got a Carnage Tyrant. I mean, our foil was meh. We got a lot of the key uncommons also. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the problem with this set is, in lies that it is also a, it's a big set. Yeah. Just like every set going forward is going to be. We didn't see near enough copies of each of the uncommons. Normally you would expect to open two to three of each uncommon yes. per box. We only saw one of each of the, the, the key uncommons, which cracking boxes so far for our, our single sales for the coming weekend, I've also kind of noticed that. Um, so, I mean, maybe it's just we got unlucky with how our boxes have been laid out. Um, but please, like, if you guys open boxes on Friday or have kind of noticed that also in opening boxes from prize pay from box from prizes and everything, please feel free to drop us a line. Let us know. Like, we're also we're also trying to figure out how, like, the correlation of the set's going to look yeah. so we can reasonably know what to expect people to come across in drafts and, and stuff like that. I haven't noticed a rhyme or reason. I mean, I have noticed that there have been packs where we see a lot of one co color in particular. Mm -hmm. Like if we, I mean, just look at this pack, there's four red cards, uh, two black cards, one white card, three green cards, two blue cards. Mm -hmm. um, like that's, that breakdown of color ratio is a little odd to me. Normally you would, you would expect to see three of each color in a pack then maybe an artifact, maybe a multicolored card or a couple multicolored cards or a land. Okay. I've noticed it a lot when I've been opening packs for the shop that we run across packs like this where we have more cards of one color than another. Yeah. Which is something- So it can something. make drafting a little funny, but- It can make drafting a little weird. Like you, you will, I guarantee you some point over the next three months while this, this set is in being drafted, you will come across a pack where there is stone nothing for the colors that you're playing. It's going to suck, but it, it's going to happen. I think this draft format is going to be a lot of fun. 
Um, it does look like a ton of fun. A lot of fun themes to build around, stuff like <coughs> that, and a lot of just good cards. The draft format seems very powerful, too, which is yeah. pretty neat. I will actually, I actually be really anxious to look at people's draft decks on Friday night, mm -hmm. um, just to see, get an idea of, did people go all in on dinosaurs? Mm -hmm. Did they just go all in on, just say, drafting just all the good cards in, the, in, in each pack? Just, yeah. Um, Manifix is not there to try even really three colors. You can get lucky enough, I guess, but it'll be really fun to see the draft format shake out come, come Friday, and especially at the Pro Tour in a few weeks. Well, as we wrap up, uh, do you want to give us a rundown of those events happening again? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So our, our normal Friday Night Magic, so we have draft starting at 7 p.m., standard starting at 7.30. Both of those events will be winner boxes. In addition to standard and, and draft on Friday, we have modern construction starting at 8 p.m. That, unfortunately, is not a winner box. But hey, you know, modern players would rather have the store credit and pick up cards that they're needing for they to build other decks. They can pick up the ops and things like that. Yep. For <laughs> um, but again, for the price payout, three boxes spread across top eight, which means 36 packs to first, 24 to second, 12 to third and fourth, and then in six packs for fifth through eighth. We'll look forward to seeing a bunch of you guys out for that event. Well, usually it is pretty crazy in here for um, FNM, which is actually, we get to have the first win a box, full win a box month At in the, the new, new location. Place. Yes. I cannot tell you how much fun it was to run pre-release in this in this new shop it was not crowded nobody felt cramped it was great. everybody was happy generally happy unless their pools were complete garbage which i mean i mean i was one of those casualties my pool was <laughs> garbage but you know hey it's pre-release i don't take too much stock in you know winning pre-releases i'd rather win when there's you know actual real dollars on the line yeah and we also have our comic town classic series legacy expo happening on saturday it has a noon start time. Is that noon uh, player seating or uh, noon 11, fire? Uh, 11 o'clock player registration will open okay. up. Uh, that event does cost $30 for your entry. But again, as Morgan said, it is a 1K. Yes. Which And there is... Uh, and it will be on Twitch. Oh, and, and it will, will be, be on Twitch. Apparently, our producer just said that it will be streamed live on Twitch. Which if you guys want to, if you guys can't make it out and you just want to sit at home and watch some sweet legacy action, you get bored by watching the Dallas Open, turn it over. Or split screen it. You watch both. <laughs> Most of you, I know most of you guys, you have two or three monitors sitting at home. Somebody's playing World of Warcraft, watching Twitch, multiple different channels. I mean, and if I had multiple monitors, that's probably what I'd be doing. And what was that last event? That last event, oh man, that's the big one. Yep. This event is going to be crazy, guys. So we have Star City Games Invitational Qualifier on Saturday, October 7th. Again, start time noon. Play registration opens at 11. $30 entry fee. It is a double price payout IQ. So it means we're paying out $2,000 spread across the top 16 players That's awesome. with the top four players getting invites to the Star City Games Invitational. Star City doesn't just let anybody run a double IQ, double price payout weekend. I want to see 100 players out here for that event. It is also in the modern format. Modern players, you guys always take care of us. You guys always give us big attendance. I want to see 100 players. I want this place to be as crowded as our midnight pre-release was. Cool. If not more. I want this place jammed full of modern players, but we're still scrambling to try to find <laughs> seats. All right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, watching our Ixalan box opening. This is uh, Eric and Morgan from Comic Town. And be sure to let us know in the comments how your guys' boxes are. Yeah, and we'll look forward to being back again for Rivals. I believe that's Rivals what, January-ish? I, I believe so. So. Like, I think it's literally just after the first of the year, isn't it? Pray the dinosaurs aren't dead. They're extinct. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Peace. Ha, ha, ha.